Psalm 25 is uh, just a touch too long to read it all out now, I'm afraid. So in a moment, you're going to have to press stop, read the whole psalm and, and then see what you make of it. But in the middle of it are four verses, verses 11 to 15, which down through the years have been incredibly important to me. They're verses that have reminded me of the kind of man that I want to be and often how short I am of that vision. And so they invite me to regularly pray that I will be growing into that kind of human being, I guess. So I'm going to read to you these verses and then I'm going to share with you how I would pray this and then leave you to think what you, what you, what you make of that. So this is verses 11 to 15. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who is the man who fears the Lord? Him will he instruct in the way that he should choose. His soul shall abide in well-being, and his offspring shall inherit the land. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes known to them his covenant. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. What, what kind of man do I want to be when I grow up? I want to be a man who is learning to live his life the Christ-like way. I want to take the James Barnett life and live it as if Jesus was living my life. Verse 12, him will he instruct in the way that he should choose. I want the Lord to teach me to live that kind of life. So it's the first thing I'm praying here. Lord, help me to live as Jesus would live. The second thing I pray as I read these verses is that there would be a peacefulness to every part of my life, an appropriate restfulness, as well as a, an appropriate investing in my life. I want to do life to the rhythms of the kingdom, not working too much, not working too little, just doing it in his pattern. And you get this abide in well-being. There'll be a sense of resting in the arms of my father and just doing life with him at his pace. Lord, teach me to live a soul shalom filled life, as one commentary puts it. I want to be the kind of man, kind of person, who helps the future generations get to know Jesus and the wonders of his kingdom. His offspring shall inherit the land, says this psalm here. I pray it for my kids, but it's more than just praying it for my kids. I pray that I be part of a church that is seeing future generations grow up, rise up, to become passionate followers of Jesus who live Christ-like lives and who are seeking the kingdom in every part of, of, of everything they do. And I want to play my part in that. I want to lead others into that. The fourth thing I pray for when I read this psalm is that I will be attentive to the voice of the Lord always. The friendship of the Lord is the way it's described here in verse 14, but actually it's the secret counsel of the Lord. I want to learn to listen. I don't want to just do it my way because I can. I want to be attentive. I want to create space. I want to be open. And then the final thing you get in verse 15, my eyes are ever toward the Lord for he will pluck my feet out of the net. I want to live a life to the audience of one. And even when things get difficult, my feet are stuck in the net, I still want to live my life to the audience of one. I still want to look to him because I think that's a life that honours him and I think it's the best place to put my eyes. So when I read verses 11 to 15, I pray this, that I be learning to live a Christ-like life, that I be resting or lying in that soul shalom, peaceful approach to life. I'd be leading others, particularly the younger generation, to him. I'd be listening for his guidance. And I'd be living my life to the audience of one. You may want to pray the same things, but you also may want to read Psalm 25 and pray in other ways that it leads you. So, God bless.